So, a couple of videos back, we done uh, plant cloning. Today, we have got animal cloning, which is slightly more complicated. But basically, I'm just going to try and work through, and I've got my book in front of me now, uh, basically the whole of the genetic engineering topic in videos, and I'm just going to do extra F214 and 215 afterwards. So, there is two ways of reproductive cloning in animals. The first of those being embryo splitting, the second of those being nuclear transfer. So embryo splitting results in you getting a load of genetically identical offspring. So that basically means these offspring are genetically identical to each other. They're not actually identical to the parents. For example here, we have our high value animal starting off with a cow. It's high value because you never know, it may produce high amounts of milk, it might have the best tasting meat in the world, and it's docile, which means... Uh, friendly they're like things we look for when we selectively breed these cows so we have our female cow and our male bull respectively and we make them do some things eggs are taken from the female and sperm is taken from the male these are in vitro fertilized so IVF makes these fuse to form a zygote the zygote then after some time develops uh, into a mass of cells, to be precise, a 16 cell embryo. So at present each one of the cells of the 16 is genetically identical. We then, uh, we then split the embryo into several different segments, so we've now got four sets of four cells. We've kind of taken a step back in the development of this embryo, but all these, all these collections of four cells will be genetically identical to one another which are then placed in this surrogate mother. Not one surrogate mother, you've got a different surrogate mother for each clone. So the four offspring produced will be twins together. They'll all be genetically identical. So this is known as embryo splitting, obviously, because you essentially split an embryo. So the next method of doing this is nuclear transfer, and this produces a genetically identical clone to your original animal. So here we have our female racehorse and I've just chosen this for example. The book gives Dolly the sheep but we're going to choose a racehorse because people like racehorses. This, uh, this horse is big, muscly, fast, it wins all the races. We've got a friend in Dubai who's very rich and he also wants a clone of this horse. The female horse on the left here is the horse we want to clone. This is the horse that we would very much like more copies of because it wins all the races. The female on the right is just an extra horse that we've got. So, basically, mammary cells, that could be any any sort of cells, just not the gametes. It could be skin cells, tissue cells, muscle cells, can be taken from the female that we want to clone. This purely because every cell in the body will have genetically identical DNA apart from the gametes, obviously. So any cell can be taken from the female on the left, and we basically just need an ovum, an egg, from the female on the right. And this ovum is enucleated. The nucleus is removed. The nucleus from one of the, the cells from the female we want to clone is transferred into the enucleated ovum. So basically you now have the nucleus in the ovum. So you kind of have a reconstructed cell. This is done by electrofusion. So the nucleus has essentially been transferred from one cell to another. So the nucleus of this egg belongs to the female we want to clone, therefore has the genetic information of the female we want to clone. This newly reconstructed egg cell is then placed into another horse. Uh, it's just tied in the oviduct. After this, the early embryo of that is then quickly recovered and inserted into a surrogate mother, which will then give birth to the genetically identical horse of the original horse. So that is the basics of nuclear transfer. However, we're going to take it a step further. It's not really something you need to know, and it's not anything really more scientific. But, you know, it could be asked. It might not, but it could be. So our friend in Dubai wanted clones of this horse here. However, we can't ship him a load of horses with all these clones in them uh, in the oviduct. We can't, we can't do that, otherwise we're going to have to just use planes full of hundreds of horses just for hundreds of cells. So, believe it or not, what we can use is rabbits. The, the newly reconstructed cell, the new, uh, with, with the cytoplasm and the eggs and, and the DNA of the, the different horses, is then placed into rabbits rather than horses because this means you can transfer a few hundred rabbits say on the plane to Dubai uh, the egg kind of 
are turned into an embryo while it's in these rabbits. And then when you get to Dubai, the rabbits are taken off the plane, the, uh, the embryos are recovered and inserted into surrogate mothers in Dubai. So like I say, you don't need to know that, but it could ask us to, I don't know, I suppose the exam could ask anything about why you can use different animals. So I'm just going to quickly give some advantages and disadvantages to cloning animals. The first advantage being high value animals. So these high value animals, they produce the best stuff, but obviously you're going to want to clone them to produce more of the best stuff. The only downside is people get greedy and all they care about is money. There's no animal welfare in mind in some factories. I mean, for example, it says here some chickens have been developed unable to walk. I mean, sure, they produce the good flavoured chicken, but they can't walk, so it's unfair on the animals. Endangered and rare species can be cloned. This is great news. Bring the populations back up. However, on the downside, if you're just cloning the same group of animals, really, you're going to have a very low, basically no genetic diversity. The variation amongst individuals is going to be low. Genetically modified animals can be produced on a large scale. This is great. So rather than just have one sheep that produces amazing spider milk and silk, or whatever it's called, we can have hundreds, which is fab. However, the long-term effects and health of these animals is going to be unclear. There's only a certain number of cell divisions that cells can go through, and if they've already gone through half of them, you never know. By the time you get to five years old, you could really be ten years old. So what we just did there was called reproductive cloning. But now we're going to talk about non-reproductive cloning. So non-reproductive cloning is basically like cloning cells uh, and tissues rather than uh, whole organisms. So, the benefits of this are, if it is your own cells that you're cloning, like stem cells, they'll be genetically identical, so there'll be no rejection. There's no need to take immunosuppressants for the rest of your life. But if you're replacing organs, uh, like livers or heart tissue and things like that, there's no wait for organ donors. You're not going to be waiting six months thinking, do you know what, I'm dying, I need some help right now. You can grow it yourself using your own cells. There's likely to be no major operation. I mean, you're going to need some sort of operation to get it going and get things started. But as opposed to knocking two people out and cutting them open to swap things in and out, you can just grow it yourself inside you once you get started. So we're going to quickly talk about xenotransplantation. So you're basically transferring uh, cells and tissues across species. Like, for example, from in the picture in the book, it shows uh, a rat growing an ear, and you're going to obviously put that on a human. But you should also know that Allotransplantation is the transplantation between animals of the same species so that rat could grow a tail to give to its other friend, the rat. This is good because you've got things like a pig here which can, which can grow a human liver potentially, which would fit. But the current problem is we've got, we've got pigs, we're using pig's liver already, uh, which is good. But I mean, there's a few problems here like differences in organ size. The pig's livers are slightly different size to humans. Uh, the body temperature two degrees higher than a human so that's why we need to grow uh, human organs in other animals rather than just transfer animal organs from other animals